Uh, so basically, this is a MetaLink software. Um, they have done a few upgrades since the 700 was released in kind of that mid-April period. Uh, as you can see here in our scanners, we have both the 500 and the 700 registered. I'm just going to go ahead and select the 700 because this is the one that I'll be demoing today. Uh, on the dashboard, it's a very kind of straightforward uh, place to be able to kind of see a bunch of information relating to your scanner and to your account. You can see your calibration period here. You can see your cloud storage. There is five terabytes of cloud storage uh, with your purchase. Uh, you can see statistics as well relating to your scanning time and everything else in between. The order status located here is directly related to any of the cases that have been sent to your lab after scanning. Um, for fabrication. So if the status is pending, that means that you've sent your, your case to your lab, your lab has yet to accept it on their end. And if it's been accepted, that means that they're busy with the case and uh, they are you know have it completed according to the date of return that you'd requested. It's not often that you will see shipped and completed updated. Typically, once the case has been removed from the MetaLink, they will get in put into their own kind of lab management software. Uh, so there is definitely a chance that uh, you may not have those statuses updated. The tooth type down here allows you to see what's been scanned versus what's been ordered, and it could be organized by a certain date range. And here as well, this is a really great opportunity to have a visual of kind of highs and lows in your day relating to your scanners. You know, if you happen to have a scanner heavy day, it'll be very obvious here in this chart, and you can make adjustments to your practice or to your schedule as required. On the left hand side, we have a bunch of action buttons here, as I like to term them. Uh, it's a uh, you know, a variety of different ways of organized information in order to be able to kind of keep everything neat and tidy. So the case box specifically is related to where you will go and create all of your patients. Um, there's a variety of different statuses as well that you can search from, including some search criteria and a date frame. The order box is relating to any of the cases that have been sent through the medit link for fabrication. And again, there is a, quite a few statuses as well as search criteria. And again, another date frame. You'll see that there are some cases that are still pending. You'll see that some are accepted. And you can actually see that there are some cases that have been rejected as well. Any cases so far in these first two screens? Um, just one question on the previous screen. For on the dashboard, you had mentioned that the five terabytes, I guess, is included in the, um, with the scanner sale. So how many cases is that? Um, so approximately, if you're doing to just like a traditional scan, upper, lower end byte, it works out to about 372,000 scans. So about 14 megabytes per file, kind of depending on uh, the, the you know, depth of the scan and how many layers are needed in it and what's been included in it. Okay, but on that's average, good about 372,000 so scans. More than a couple of lifetimes, okay. <laughs> Plenty of space, you bet. <laughs> Uh, so then uh, just going back here to this uh, last list that I'm going to show is called the case talk. So this is where you will find cases that have been sent either to a patient or to a colleague for, you know, consultation, case acceptance and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really great place for your treatment coordinator to be able to see what's been going on um, with cases that have been kind of forwarded to the patient. They're able to view the case. They can make comments to the case, but they're not able to modify or delete the case. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, I'll show you once we kind of get into that scanning screen what that all looks like. Sure. The, the app box is kind of this last, you know, important section here on this first few steps. Uh, this is where you're going to go and receive your software updates. So with both the seven and the five, the seven hundred and the five hundred, uh, you know, you've got really good hardware, and Medit's done a really great job now to focus on what they can provide on the software side of it. So you'll see that there's constantly things that are available for install or for update. Uh, there's things that have been pre-installed with your scanner as well. Uh, so you can come into the app box to sort all of that. In the coming soon section, uh, Medit has listed four different updates that will be coming. Once these are available, uh, completed and available for uh, an update, they will be listed under the all. Uh, so it's great to see that they're making these changes, you know, so quickly after the release of the, the new update to the software itself when the 700 came out. So it's great to see that it's constantly progressing. So for what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create a case. So I've gone back into the case box. I'm going to select a new case. I'm going to type in a patient. We are going to call this Friday 7. And we're going to go ahead and register the scan, which will allow us to see a form, register the patient, and also kind of get us prepared to do our scan.
So in the screen, this is our you know, prescription uh, that we have available through the Medit. Uh, you can see down below here that you can sort your prescription through teeth workflows or through arch workflows. Uh, each of these workflows has been preset in a very specific manner. If there is in the off chance that you'd like to add extra steps to your scans, you do have the opportunity to select either an upper or lower pre-op scan, as well as a face scan that can be included with your uh, current workflow that's been already preset. The face scan can be really helpful. Uh, say, for example, you're, do, you're dealing with a prosthetic or a prosthodontic case where the patient has very distinct lip size, nose, any kind of feature, uh, then it may be helpful for the lab to be able to kind of follow you know, that lip line uh, a little bit more easily with that face scan. So it can be very, very helpful. Um, with the method as well, uh, it is important to acknowledge that you are not able to combine the prescription for teeth and arch at this time. You do need to be able to um, either, I, I call it designating what your major treatment is, and then how do we deal with their minor treatment? So we go through all of this in our training regimen, but you know, for example, if you have a case that you're doing crowns on six to 11 and you also need a good night guard, then I recommend preparing your prescription for your major treatment, which will be your crowns. And then in this little button right here, it's called the memo button. This is where you will indicate the lower night guard as well so that your lab has that information to be able to proceed with both. Okay, got it. Uh, for the purpose of our demo, we're going to go ahead and do a set of study models. So you'll click on the upper study model, digital study model, and you'll do the same workflow for the lower. Once you have your prescription set here, then you're pretty much ready to go. You do have the option of saving your prescription here. Or you can just go ahead and click to scan if there's nothing else that needs to be noted. As I mentioned earlier, there is this memo button in order for you to be able to indicate specific notations for your lab. You can also look at your case history. So when the case was created, scanned, and last modified, that can be helpful if you're a bigger practice and you know, you've got multiple people going into those cases. And you know, sometimes it's important to know when it was last modified to ensure that you're sending the most recent and updated scan. Uh, you can also email the direct scan to Medit Support. I do recommend, though, however, that if you do have any issues with your scan, that you reach out to uh, your account manager first. Um, you know, we're familiar with how we've trained you, what you know, kind of support you may need, and you may have the opportunity as well to get a faster response than uh, contacting Medit directly. So we're here to help however we can with our support structure. Okay, good. Good to know. If you need to delete your case, for example, if you created it in error, you can go ahead and delete the case here. You can clone the case as well. Uh, this is especially important once the case has been ordered and sent to your laboratory, you are unable to modify that scan. So if there are any changes that need to be made, then that will be done by cloning the file. And again, we go through that in detail in our training regimen. Uh, there's a section here as well to attach files. This is wonderful if you're dealing with a lab that is fully digital and you're wanting to ensure that you are able to send digital photography or you know, any kind of you know, other files that you may want rather than the lab receiving a digital scan through the Medit link and then with their driver or through the mail, they're receiving manual photos. You can actually attach all of this to your scan so that they're able to get it in one cohesive location, which can streamline communication. So it's really, really helpful and important. You can also export your scan. Uh, this is, you know, can be helpful if you're wanting to take it out of the Medit without going through the Medit link. You have three different ways that you can export it. You can do it as an STL, which is typically what's used at the lab. It's a non-color scan or as a PLY or an OBJ, which are both color exports. This button here is that case talk that I had mentioned when we were in the case talk action button. So this is where you would go ahead and share the scan with a patient. Simply just click on the button here. If you do have a scan, you will actually see the information here relating to the scan. And then you have the opportunity to go here and select uh, share with specific people. But by email, include the email address, and then you get the link. And then that get, they get notified on their side uh, that they do have something there to view. Any general questions with what I've shown you so far? When I share with uh, someone, when I share with someone, do they have to have the Medit link as well installed? No, they don't. It's just a, an actual link that gets sent by email, and then it goes into a viewer that you're able to see. Okay, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Good. Uh, the other thing to note quickly is that this is the list of modules that are up here. So the Medit uh, does come with four different modules. It comes with the Medit Smile Design, which allows you to do kind of like a 2D smile simulation. 
It allows you to um, have a Medit ortho simulator also for any cases that you're kind of wanting to, to determine or establish if ortho could be done. Uh, there's also the Medit uh, crown fit and the Medit compare. So as part of our training regimen, you know, we do our training kind of in three stages. We do a fundamentals, we do a product-based training, and then we also do a module training to go through in depth the four different modules that are included with your Medit purchase. Uh, okay, so now we have our prescription ready to go. Everything looks good. I'm going to go ahead and hit scan. So I'm going to be print, uh, I'm going to be scanning on digitally printed models, and I'm using a Panadin particulator. And my model's right here. So in case you're wondering why there isn't a color scan, then that will be the reason. Just bear with me here for a moment. I'm just going to double check my power. No problem. Perfect. So it's really important to note that in order to be able to successfully scan, uh, you need to ensure that your laptop is plugged in at all times. Okay, got it. Little things. Yeah, little things make sense. <laughs> make sure there's power. Make sure there's power. So I've gone ahead and plugged my uh, 700 into my computer. I'm currently using a USB-C connection into my laptop. So there's two different ways that you can connect it. Either through a USB and a hub or through the uh, USB-C directly to the laptop. I'm just fixing my camera. Uh, so a couple of neat features with the 700. I don't know if you've been exposed to the 500 or less of you, but with the 700, uh, they've made some really cool uh, updated features. So the 700 actually has a remote control button right here. So that say, for example, if you're with a patient and you're alone and you don't have the opportunity to go back to your mouse to access your screens, you can actually toggle through the system and rotate your scans using the remote control. I see. I got it. So I can control it with, with the scanner itself. Yeah, with Screen. the scanner itself. So cool. that it takes you, um, you know, away from having to kind of like go back to a mouse that you may have trouble disinfecting afterwards. Um, the other cool thing too is that it is a bit smaller. I have hands the size of an 11 year old. I find that it fits quite nicely in my hand. Um, but what's super cool is that you can actually take the tip and rotate it 180 degrees so that you can kind of maintain that ergonomic grasp on your scanner. And then you can kind of go ahead and scan the upper with a little bit more ease. So it's a really, really great and neat, helpful feature. Uh, with regard to the eye scan screen that we have here, again, on our left-hand side, we have a variety of different tools. We have three different trimming tools. You can do a larger trim, a smaller, more specific trim, or just a quick trim, uh, as well as you can check your undercuts. This is especially important when you're dealing with crown and bridge cases, uh, or if you know, you're dealing with the night guard, you want to kind of see how retentive something is, then you can uh, take a peek at the undercut analysis. Uh, say, for example, in the workflow up here, you've scanned your lower before your upper, no worries, you can go ahead and swap those arches. Uh, you can also mark your margins. Say, for example, if you've got you know, a really tricky crown or bridge case, patient's a bit of a bleeder, you know, you've done the best that you can to control everything and that margin just isn't super clear. Perhaps it's more of a feather edge, deep forcation. You have the option to mark that margin for your lab in order for them to be able to see that information a little bit more clearly. Uh, you can also replay your scan. So this is helpful if you've got staff that maybe perhaps haven't done a lot of scanning. They're really stuck on a case. It's taken them seven minutes to scan a patient. They can actually go back into the scan and replay it and kind of take a peek at their scanning strategy in order to be able to see the areas of improvement that could come uh, with that assessment. Uh, you can also take HD photos. Uh, the quality of it is actually quite good. And I'll take a picture of that uh, throughout our demo too. And there's also an ability to take measurements as well. Any questions? No, no not so far. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and select the upper. So typically when I scan, I try to kind of do this like little rotative motion like this in order to be able to capture what I call the tops of my mountains. The whole point that I'm trying to achieve is ensure that I have occlusal markers in place in order to be able to then continue to build the wall of my so-called mountain. I'm going to go ahead and start scanning my upper. So you'll see that the, the Medit also has a smart stitch feature. So for example, you will have noticed on kind of the left-hand side of the screen yeah, that there's some that. data 
yeah, that gets picked up. So uh, when you're kind of scanning, it kind of gives you the ability to be a bit more flexible in kind of your scan pattern. And as you kind of build your information, it actually pieces it all together and meshes it for you uh, so that you can kind of just focus on trying to scan and capture the imagery and letting the, the post-processing kind of do it on its own. So you can see that the image keeps kind of going on and off. Yeah, so that's very cool. Can, yeah, it can be a little distracting at first, um, but once you kind of have an idea of, of how it works and, and how to improve your scan strategy to ensure that you're picking up your data a bit more readily, uh, it's a very, very useful tool. Well, the scanning speed is pretty impressive, quite impressive. Yeah, it's quite fast. Um, I just want to actually quickly just show you, because I know you're probably wondering, why are these patients too green? Uh, so I scan it in a readability map so that I can see that anything that is green is good, anything that's red needs a bit more data, and I can clearly kind of see these pieces of, of teeth structure that is actually missing. Sometimes with the natural tooth view, so if this was an actual patient, you would see gum and then you would see teeth. If you're rotating this really quickly, due to the contrast in the background, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to see those missing pieces. So I oftentimes like to just double check in this view right here, because I can clearly see where I gotta go in and capture the scans. Okay, and what does the red mean? So there's like green and red or orange. Yes, yeah, so the red means that I do need a little bit more data. So you can see here that this is a bit incomplete. We can see that there's these you know, little holes here that I need to fill. So it's just a, a very clear color map for me to know where I've got to pick up that extra data. So for the purpose of the demo, uh, the majority of this stuff is all okay. I just need to make sure that in my areas or in my uh, bite markers, so to speak, that I capture enough data to be able to register that bite properly. So I try to have two to three millimeters of, of gum in there. And I try to ensure that my interdontal spaces are well captured. So I got to kind of get a bit more. And then I have complete occlusal surfaces. So I'm just going to quickly fix the rest of the scan here and then we can move to the OR. Okay, got it. So I find my occlusal marker. And then I kind of just fill that up. Make sure that I capture it all. So we should be good to go with that data there. So like I said, I, I do realize I have a little bit missing data here, but that isn't going to be affecting what we need to do at the moment. So we're gonna go ahead to the lower. And I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna do a walking motion to collect my mountain tops, and then move to the buckle. So the medit's got a few different ways of kind of acknowledging where your scan is. So as you can see on the right-hand side, you have the live view that's come into play. On the right side, you have your smart stitch. And then in your main screen, you've got your big image that's in the readability map that we're currently looking at. The other thing too, is that the medit actually has the opportunity for you to play music while you're scanning, which allows you to give, which gives you kind of an audible tone to kind of show, ensure that you're kind of like on track and that you're staying in that kind of like connectivity with the teeth. You can actually also pretty much touch the teeth when you're scanning, which is really helpful. So there isn't like a super magical hover like a lot of the other scanners out there in order for you to ensure that you're capturing the data properly. So I'm just going to make sure that these interdental spaces here are well captured. And then double check on this side too. Got enough gum there. Perfect. So here's our scan, and again, we're taking a peek in this view, so I can see that I've got a couple of little pieces of missing data, um, and I can kind of clean up my little motor back view a bit, so I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to go to this side as well since I'm here, and I'm just going to make sure that I capture all those little red spots. There we go. Okay, so here we are with our scan. I've got a bit of a discrepancy here on the interior, but for the sake of, of what we've asked for for treatment, this should suffice. Uh, another quick note before I go into the bite is I did want to just quickly let you know that you can set your glove color uh, with the method as well. So there's a smart filter color option that allows you kind of to, to be able to indicate those glove colors. So say, for example, you know, assistants got pink gloves or green gloves and someone else has blue gloves. You can preset up to three different colors so that if you happen to have to be in the patient's mouth, your scanner's not picking that up. 
Uh, the other notable button here to consider is the high resolution scan. This can be something that's very helpful with your Crown and Bridge type of cases. If you're you know, uh, scanning for a prep or anything, it's always great to, to toggle the HD on, as well as any implant cases and kind of larger, more complex tissue type cases. Um, I wouldn't recommend scanning all of your cases in HD because it does eat up a lot of your memory. Um, but uh, we do work through the product-based training as to when to use it and when not to use it. Uh, the Medit's also done a really great job on their metal scan. Uh, so, you know, oftentimes, you know, back in the day, you needed to be able to use powders and you needed to abrade in order to be able to kind of scan that brilliant crown. So the Medit's worked on the tone of its light in order to be able to capture that a bit more successfully. So uh, those are all really, really good improvements with the intro scanner. Any questions? No, it makes sense to me. Perfect. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to capture the bite. So I'm going to put my models back onto the articulator. So when we go to capture the bite, it is done in a swooping motion like so. And it should only take a couple swipes in order for you to be able to register it if you've captured all of your kind of markers appropriately. So I'm going to go ahead and try scanning this. Actually, just gonna pull up in here. Let's see if I get the scanner. So you can see here that we have a discrepancy of the bite. Uh, according to my models, I do not have an overbite. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually change onto the second occlusion here. And I'm going to try my other side and see if I can get it to align. Oh, okay. Perfect. So I can see here now my alignment looks good. Everything looks great. So I'm going to actually go onto my other side here and just double check that it has been improved with that secondary alignment. So I, I now have the same bite for both sides here. Uh, so again, this is something that can, you know, it can happen if you do not have the appropriate uh, capturing done, enough tissue, some of the introductory spaces. So we work through all of that with you uh, in our product-based training. Uh, the other key feature too with the bite is that the Medit has also allowed us the opportunity to include five different types of bites. So this is really helpful for say, you know, a larger prostal case or sometimes in the liner case or a deep programmer case where there's, you know, lots of different bites that come into play. You have the opportunity of listing all of those bites there. So be it for your VDO, the thickness of night guard or anything, you have a bunch of options here with the Medit, which is really, really great. As for the camera, I'll just quickly take a picture. So you can see that the detail is quite clear. Uh, you can you know, take a bunch of different pictures in it and uh, kind of go from there. So it's a very, very useful tool. Okay, that's pretty neat. Don't need a separate yeah. camera. Nope, not at all. Uh, okay, so then now we've got this good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and complete our scan. So you have two different ways of exporting the files. You can export it to create a 3D printable model. So basically you can kind of put a, a base of source onto your model so that it's ready for you to put them into your mesh mixer and into your printer and off you go. Or you can do it as a standard digital model, which is the type of file that your lab will receive in order to be able to continue with the case. So that's what we're gonna select. So you'll see here that it went from a form only to a processing. Uh, so this takes about 45 seconds to a minute, depending on how large the file is. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just gonna quickly show you uh, a small sample. So this is one of the modules that we have. So I have a case here that I've got created for sample small. So typically with a smile sample, you should have two different files. You should have a regular smile and then you should have a retracted smile. 
in this specific sample, I do only have just a regular smile, but it will allow me to at least show you what the interface looks like while we're waiting for that case to process. So as you can see here, it kind of starts with your marking points and they're all able to be moved just to kind of depending on how you want to set them. You say, for example, you'd like to place you know, the pupils in place, all that kind of stuff. That's all ready to go. Once you have your markers in place, you can continue with the template. So this is a, you know six kind of pre-organized templates that we have here uh, to kind of start as a base. So we can you know say, for example, let's start with oval. So from here, we can start making some adjustments to the case. So if you click on each individual one, you have the opportunity of lengthening it or making it shorter. You can make it wider, all of that kind of stuff. You also can rotate it depending on what you're needing to do. Once you've kind of taken care of your structure here, then you have a variety of different tools here uh, that you're able to kind of utilize in order to make it work for you. So in the texture, we do have a texture type default here with a bunch of different options. And we go through the module in quite a bit of detail uh, in our training. Uh, but you can even go ahead and select the patient's existing color and gum color to make this all look a bit more realistic. So there are some really, really cool tools here that can help with some uh, you know, diagnostic uh, case acceptance. Um, just so that we can kind of give you a really, really obvious differentiation here. I'm just going to elongate these teeth. You do have the option of mirroring each side too, but again, we go through that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a preview of just some of the modifications that I've done so you can see the difference. So you can see here's my original smile on my right hand side, and then here's my modifications of my lovely smile on the um, sorry, the right hand side, my original on the left hand side. So with a little bit of finesse and patience, this can be a really, really great useful tool for both you and your and the treatment coordinator in the office. Any quick questions? Sure, no, it makes a, no, it makes a lot of sense. That's that's a that's a, it's a great tool. Yeah. So I just always like to kind of give a little sneak. I'm just going to go ahead and close that. We're going to go back into our case box and let's see what our file is doing. So we've just quite finished wrapping it up right here. So it should be just another second or so. And then we can go ahead and go to that case. So now we can see that the scan's completed. I can go ahead and click order, which means that I'm content with the information that I have and I'm ready to send this for fabrication of these digital study models. So we're just waiting for the transfer to be complete. So here we're able to select our partners. So we've got two partners listed here. Um, you can go ahead and you know, share the patient's name depending on your state laws or where you're located. It is an international product. So they have the ability to untick that. You can include your delivery date. And again, any additional memos to the, uh, to the lab that are needed can be indicated here. If say, for example, you've got multiple pictures or multiple occlusion that you don't want to send, you can select all of those under the files for ordering. And uh, then that way you're only sending the lab what they're needing rather than anything access that might not be of any benefit to them. So once that's all taken care of, you can just hit okay. And you can see now that the case has been ordered. So I'd mentioned earlier in our demo, if uh, you've already sent a case that is not able to be modified. So if I were to go ahead and try to open this case, I do have an, uh, a notation that comes up that indicates to clone the case in order to perform the action because you're not able to adjust any of that stuff. So again, in our, in our training, we go through you know, situations as to you know, why you need to clone, what things might come up and everything else in between to ensure that you're as successful as possible. And that pretty much wraps up the demo side. Did you have any direct questions before you go? No, I think it is uh, all good. Uh, well explained and uh, thanks so much Maria for, the, for your time this has been great perfect awesome well I appreciate your time today and I uh, look forward to helping you on your digital journey take care all right you too see ya